So welcome back to the garage and you can see I've made some uh, pretty good progress. It's been a while since my last video. Uh, it's taken, you know, always takes longer than you expect, but uh, all the little things add up. So I've got uh, all the welding done on the framework. I've got uh, some paint on it so that hopefully it doesn't rust between now and when I get the panels put on. But now you can, you can see what I'm going for. You can get an idea of the uh, size and shape of it. So uh, how about I give you a tour? So of course this will be the side walk-in door. There'll be a, a door here. I'll probably add another step to get in. Um, and you can see I've got uh, things mounted solidly to the cab. Now we've got the, uh, you saw my earlier video, I've got uh, polyurethane bushings um, between the framework of the camper and the frame. This should match the about the same amount of flex as the stock uh, body mounts that the cab's on. So hopefully uh, I shouldn't have anything like it. Hopefully it won't try to break the cab or anything. We'll, only time will tell. Up over the cab, I'm going to build a sleeper area there. Uh, not a huge one, really just a, a one person sleeping berth. Uh, I don't want it hanging over the, the front too much. Um, and then also you can see my two chairs here. Uh, this is just mocking up what's going to be um, a dinette, two seats facing each other with the table, and this will convert into a slightly larger sleeping area. This is honestly probably where I'll sleep most of the time, but if I don't feel like converting it from a dinette to a, a uh, sleeper, I can sleep up top. So on this side, I'm going to have a really simple kitchen, uh, basically a countertop, probably mount a microwave into a, a cabinet up above it. I am not going to have a permanent cook stove because honestly a portable cook stove on top is, is easier than when I don't need it. It can go in a drawer and a small sink. And right next to it, this is going to be the shower slash bathroom area. Uh, I've got a cassette toilet so I don't have to have a black water tank. I do have a gray water tank that the shower can mount into or can, can drain into, as well as the sink. So all my plumbing will be uh, limited to this area. And under one of the seats of the dinette is where I plan on putting the fresh water tank. So I'll have a fresh water tank for drinking water, uh, showering water, washing dishes, and the waste for that goes into the, uh, into the gray water tank. And the cassette toilet I've got has its own water supply into it. So it'll be uh, filled with water for flushing. So here in the other corner, this is, you know, the, the, the goal behind this is it's a simple toy hauler where I can haul motorcycles primarily. A few things larger than motorcycles, but primarily motorcycles. Uh, so this area is going to be dedicated to the motorcycle. I'll probably put some sort of a curtain, you know, something not permanent. I, I want to be able to have open space to carry large things as needed because I, I still want to be able to use it as a truck if I need to haul anything. Uh, but if I'm just hauling a motorcycle, I can have a curtain. I'm going to have an exhaust fan up above. So any fumes or, you know, gas fumes or the smell of the rubber from the tires can all get evacuated by the exhaust fan in the roof. So, you know, give me a little bit of fresh air in the rest of the RV. And the back door here, this is a drop down ramp. So I've got two latches here that allows it to uh, go down. Uh, I haven't completely hooked this up, but I, I had an old ATV winch sitting around. So my plan is uh, right now, this isn't terribly heavy, but once I've got uh, the, all the sheathing on it and everything, it's probably going to be a little heavier than I want. I could lift it if I needed to, but I've got the winch to pull that up. Uh, that also has the advantage of I can run the cable through a pulley down on to one of the tie downs on the floor and I can winch it. You know, if I have a heavy bike that I need to get in here that's not running, I can winch it up, uh, up the ramp. So I can't just, I, I could just drop this. I'd rather not. Uh, normally the winch cable will allow me to drop it down slower. So let's go outside and I can show you what the ramp looks like out there. So you can see it's uh, not a terribly steep ramp, but it's a little steeper than I'd like. 
what my plan is, is uh, while I can get up and down it like this, I'll probably put some stands underneath it and have another, you know, another ramp that folds out this, give me a little easier uh, slope up into it. So a little bit about the construction of the frame. Uh, so, of course, a couple videos ago, you saw the body mouse that I made. That's how it's actually connected to the frame of the truck. Bolted to that is the cross members that I made in the last video. So uh, what you haven't seen is those cross members have uh, some of this one inch square tubing tying those together. So it's uh, there, there's some supports under the floor that you can't see under the plywood that gives the floor a little more support and ties those cross members uh, to each other. And then the rest that you can see here, this is all one inch square tubing that's uh, 120 wall or eighth of an inch thick. And uh, so as I had mentioned on this channel before, when I screw up, I will show you my screw up so you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, making this, this part that actually bolts to the cab, it's a fairly simple task, but it's been hot here. And when I get hot, especially when welding in the heat, I get in a hurry and I screw things up. So when I made this top part, when I welded the seam, of course, you know, you sh whenever you do something like that, you should do it slowly to avoid putting too much heat into it because it will warp. When you put a lot of heat into metal from welding, when it shrinks, it, or when it cools, it shrinks. So what happened here as I welded this, it was a hot day, I wanted it done, I know better, but of course, you know, just because we know better doesn't mean we do better. When I welded that, it shrunk and it just warped this horribly. It was uh, uh, probably a good half inch. It, when I put a straight edge across, it was probably a half inch off in the middle. So it was no longer going to bolt to, you know, obviously the, the cab is in a flat plane. This no longer was. So I don't know if you can see here. Uh, I think I have a little bit of video I shot when, uh, when I did that job. What I had to do is I had to make several cuts along here clamp a straight edge to it to make it straight again. And I had to do it on, on this face as well and then re-weld it. So that was allowing me to get this in line. Of course, when I did that, the whole thing is now slightly shorter. So I had to recut uh, the inside faces of these parts so that it lined up with the cab again. And that's why it's, uh, you see more of the cab here on the edge than I really wanted it's still going to work as it is. Mostly it's a lot of extra work. So the, the lesson I'm trying to teach you here is when you're welding something that needs to be flat, take your time and don't just let it distort and you just cause yourself more work. So while it took longer than I expected and I did have my one big screw up that uh, in the end didn't make anything any worse really, it just caused me extra work. Uh, I'm pretty happy with uh, with the results. It's it's good and sturdy. Things are are relatively square, at least as, as square as I would hope. Um, I feel this is going to be stronger than any commercially built uh, RV. They tend to be built a little bit flimsy, so it should last me a good long time. Be good and rugged. So the next thing uh, I'm going to be working on is making the composite panels that are going to go on this. Uh, actually, I already started on that a little bit, but uh, you'll have to. Wait till the next video to see how that goes. So uh, hopefully it'll be won't be as long as it was between the last video and this video. Uh, but either way, we we should see some progress soon.